Hello everybody, I'm Ethan, the founder of Outcast Games. Yesterday, Epic Games released a early access version of Unreal Engine 5, and it is absolutely amazing. Among the new features added, there is a complete user interface overhaul. And in this video, I'll be walking you through the interface and what's different when compared to Unreal Engine 4. Let's begin. The biggest change to the Unreal Engine 5 editor when compared to the Unreal Engine 4 editor is the absence of the Create window and the Content Browser. To access the Create menu, click this little button here and it'll give you a drop down menu, which is much smaller than the old Create window. It takes up a whole lot less space on the screen. To access the Content Browser, press Control and Space at the same time. It will disappear on its own when you drag an object into the scene. It will disappear when you press Control and Space again. And it will disappear when you click anywhere else inside the Unreal Engine 5 editor. There is a new drop down menu here called Content, where you can create new content browsers and open the marketplace and open a Quixel Bridge application that is built into Unreal Engine 5. Here you can drag, Let's see, it looks like I, hmm, it's not loading in my asset, there we go, okay, so you can drag any assets you've downloaded in, it will bring in a low polygon version for an instant, and then load in the full resolution mesh. You can also drag and drop assets that you have not yet downloaded. Let's grab these rocks here and drag them in. They're not an asset that I've downloaded, at least the nanite resolution. Oops. And I believe I dragged that in on medium quality instead, but oh well. It brings in a low polygon version of the asset while it downloads the high polygon version. When the high polygon version is downloaded, it replaces the low polygon version. And here we go. Looks like the medium quality, which I accidentally had selected there, was downloaded and has now replaced the low polygon mesh. Using the blueprints menu here, you can open blueprints, open a level blueprint, and create a new blueprint class. And you can also still do this from the content browser like usual. There's a cinematics drop down menu. You can change your edit modes with this bar up top. You can access the play options with this menu here. And the build menu has been renamed to platforms. You can find settings over here all the way on the right where you can change your scalability settings and all of that kind of stuff. You can now collapse tabs that you don't want to read to give yourself more space in the actual level browser of sorts here. I cannot remember the actual name for it or the details panel. You can just click the little triangle to get them back. And you can also collapse these tabs to the sidebar or you can then click on them individually. And if you want them to go back to where they were to begin with, just right click and restore tab. Now, another new feature is the ability to favorite properties in the details panel. Let's say that you change the simulate physics property all the time. I'm not sure why you do that, but you can simply right click, add to favorites. And if you scroll to the top, and click toggle favorites. It is right up at top. Let's go ahead and remove that from favorites. I don't tick and uncheck that all the time. I'm not sure who would. Anyway, there is one more big and pretty cool feature here with the UI. If you go to edit, editor preferences, you can change the viewport selection color is actually something that I've already done. I like this blue. And you can change the active theme. To create a new theme, you can 
duplicate this theme and edit it, or you can just edit an existing theme. I duplicated the dark theme, edited it already, to create this a Visual Studio-esque theme based off of the Microsoft Visual Studio uh, code editing program. Uh, and I just had it open at the time and thought it would make for a good example. And you can edit it and you just change all these colors. The same way you change the color in a uh, three vector parameter for a material. Use a little eyedropper and grab any color. Like we can make these uh, pink here, just pulling from this hue right here. That looks bad, I think, but it's each their own. And that is everything new in the UI for Unreal Engine 5. As you've probably seen, pretty much everything is either the same or close to the same. Things just look streamlined and modern. And I honestly love the new UI. And I cannot wait to see what's next for Unreal Engine 5. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, consider liking, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell. I'll be making more Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5 tutorials in the future. Thank you.